Minecraft is a very realistic game. Said no one ever. This is the same game where blocks go on strike against gravity, where thousand pound steel anvils break on eggs, where the company making the game decides it's a good idea to let the players vote on features like seriously Mojang, nobody likes the phantom or the glow squid, and the game where if you walk far enough in your world, the laws of physics and reality become real. Now all of you watching this video probably know how weird and wonderful Minecraft can be at times, and I also know a lot of you are redstoners, and if you're new, hi, welcome, I'm a talking dirt block. But even if you aren't a redstoner, you all know of one of the most powerful and versatile blocks in the game, the pistons. Normal and sticky pistons are probably one of the most important blocks in Minecraft. You have a boring build that looks dead and stupid, hey. bring it to life with a piston. Tired of manually farming crops? Boom, destroy them with pistons. Wanna make blocks travel at the speed of light? Pistons! Without the ability to move blocks, Minecraft would be a way less interesting game, and some YouTube channels you all know and love might not have been where they are today, but as amazing and ground pink pinking, but as amazing and groundbreaking as pistons can be, they make absolutely no sense. So what I plan to do in this video is find out how much energy a piston requires to, well, do what a piston does. To do that, we need to figure out how fast the piston head moves, find out what the heaviest block in Minecraft is that a piston can push, and finally calculate the energy required to just make this thing work. Like all blocks in Minecraft, pistons are a 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter cube that, when extended, stand at 2 meters tall or long depending on the direction it's facing, pushing any blocks in front of it one block away. In this video will be using Java Edition's piston timing, which means when a piston is powered, it takes three game or 0.15 seconds to extend its head 1 meter. And that is roughly 6.6 .6 meters per second. And if you don't know how fast that is, that is around 23.76 kilometers an hour or 14.76 or miles per hour for you American weirdos. Now imagine you're a player getting pushed, well, not really pushed at this point, run over by a slab of wood traveling at 23 kilometers an hour. Now imagine one of Minecraft's most popular contraptions, a piston elevator. Traveling at 10 blocks per second? Well, like shattering your legs 3 billion times per second. Okay, how about we dial it back? Instead of a piston elevator, let's just say you're sitting on a single piston that's facing upwards, and then it powers. Well, instead of just going up one block like you do in Minecraft, you'd probably get flung in the air. Forget using slime blocks, the piston mod got it more accurately. Now we just mentioned the speed of the piston head when it hits you, or rather launches you, or shatters your legs. But how heavy is the piston head that is hitting you like a truck? Well in real life, these kinds of mechanical components are usually made of metals like steel or aluminum. But no, in Minecraft, metal is way too fancy, so instead we use rocks and trees. Because the piston crafting recipe allows for any wooden planks to be used, we'll be sticking to oak to make it simple. The density of white oak comes to around 659 kilograms per meter cube, according to the Quebec Wood Expert Bureau. And since you get four wooden planks from one log, each plank weighs around 165 kilograms or 364 pounds. Since we only care about the piston head since that's the only thing that moves, we will exclude all the other parts of the piston recipe. So with the head being made of three wooden planks, that weighs around 495 kilograms, which is as much as a grand piano. Well guess what, we're just getting started. So far we've only covered the piston pushing nothing but a player and itself, but things get a whole lot crazier when we start adding blocks in front of it. If you didn't already know, pistons in Minecraft have a limit. They can only push up to 12 blocks, but what these 12 blocks are don't matter as long as they are all pushable. They can be 12 blocks of wool, 12 blocks of dirt, slime, honey, any combination of 12 blocks you can think of. And all of these blocks come in various weights. So now we ask, what is the heaviest pushable block in Minecraft? For a long time, people have said that gold blocks are the heaviest block in the game with a density of around 19,300 kilograms per meter cube. Th that seems pretty hard to beat. But are there any heavier blocks? Yup. And what is that block? Netherite. Because a gold block in Minecraft is made from 9 gold ingots, that means each gold ingot weighs around 2,144 kilograms. Well guess how many gold ingots are in a netherite block? A gold block only has 9, while a netherite block has 36. On gold ingots alone, a netherite block weighs 4 times as much as a gold block. But we're still missing half of the crafting recipe, the ancient debris. Now, because netherite is a gold alloy, since the recipe for the ingots requires gold and some other mysterious metal, that narrows down the possible materials ancient debris could be. For our marvelous metallic candidates to become ancient debris, they need to follow some criteria. Firstly, the metal has to have a very high melting point, since in Minecraft, netherite is the only item that won't burn in lava. Secondly, the metal has to be rare, with ancient debris being the rarest ore in the game, our real-life metal counterpart has to be equally as valuable. And finally, our real-life netherite has to be durable, since in the game, netherite tools have the highest durability. So let's see our candidates. Common white metal gold alloys include nickel, palladium, silver, 
silver, and platinum. Criteria 1, melting point. Let's chuck them all in lava, which can be as hot as 1,250 degrees Celsius and see who survives. And would you look at that, silver has bit the dust with a melting point of just 961.8 degrees Celsius. I guess you could say the lava was just too hot to handle. I'm keeping that in. Next up, let's see how rare these materials are. So, metals, go hide. I'm gonna count down in five, four, three, two, one, and oh no, nickel, I found you. It doesn't really help that you're the fifth most abundant metal on earth. So we only have platinum and palladium left, and one more test to see who is the fog ancient debris. So which metal is harder? Palladium. The crafty master man, platinum has a higher melting point. Looks like the only way to know which metal is ancient debris is see which alloy is better, and yeah, it's platinum. Using the density of platinum, which is 21,450 kilograms per meter cube, and the fact that one ancient debris only gives you one piece of netherite scrap, we can add four of them together with four gold ingots to get one netherite bar that weighs 94,376 kilograms. You are literally holding more than 90% of a blue whale in your hand, and that is just one tiny netherite ingot. Multiplying it by 9 and we get the mass of one netherite block which is 849,384 kilograms or 849.384 metric tons. Okay, now let's just add 11 more to get 12 netherite blocks, which should be the heaviest mass a piston can push in Minecraft. And we get 10,192,608 kilograms, which is over 10,000 metric tons. To put that into perspective, a single piston can lift the Statue of Liberty plus 361 more effortlessly. And these are without a doubt the most powerful and destructive blocks in the game. But just how powerful do these pistons need to be to lift what they're able to lift? Now remember, these pistons aren't just lifting these blocks, they are moving them at 23 kilometers an hour. Now to figure this out, we'll assume that the piston is facing upwards, pushing all of these blocks against gravity, and that the gravity in Minecraft is the same as Earth's gravity. We also have to find the acceleration of the piston head, which, yes, is different to its speed. To calculate that, we need to subtract the starting velocity from the final velocity, and divide that by the elapsed time. So, the final velocity a piston head achieves is 1 meter per 0.15 seconds, and there is no starting velocity since the piston just instantly gets to that speed. We then square the 0.15 seconds, and now we have 1 meter over 0.15 seconds squared. And then boom, we square up and we simplify the fraction, and now we have our piston acceleration of 44.4 meters per second squared. So to find the force required to lift all of these netherite blocks, we need to multiply the mass, which is about 10,000 metric tons, by the acceleration, which is our 44.4 meters per second squared, by the height we want to lift the blocks, which is 1 meter. Doing all the math, a piston that can push 12 netherite blocks upwards requires 552.439 megajoules. That is 552,439,354 joules. That is an absolutely monstrous amount. Put that into perspective, you would need more than 550 lightning strikes to power this thing. That is almost a week of an average house's power consumption in an instant. To put it Simply, these things are absolute power hogs. But if pistons require this much energy, then that begs the question, how powerful is redstone itself? Ah, uh, well, that's probably a video for another time.